to the Kent Lap Podcast. Now, when you were walking through this forgiveness, um, was it specific and and like like where you put you know I don't know had a particular prayer or 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 in therapy or just on on your own kind of a process where you kind of wrote through or something where it's like a little bit more official sort of forgiveness or was it just more like the way you were thinking over that period of time and in your prayers and in your thought processes and just kind of a, a more natural organic kind of releasing or forgiveness? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh... I I did write letters um, that I never sent, but I wrote what I felt that I needed to to let it go, and then I burned them and let oh, go of I them see. that okay. way. Okay. Um, and I think it really became uh, a retraining of my mind um, into how I was thinking about things and and situations and people um, and what was guiding my life versus the stories that had been guiding it for so long and the I pain see. that had been guiding my life, and so. Um, you know, I think it was a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I was still, I wasn't the only, yeah, that was really, I think that was my therapy forgiveness and just kind of working through that. Mm -hmm. And I think talking about it, I've always loved depth and deep conversations. And uh, I have a dear, dear friend, her name is Anna and, uh, she, and I've always been able to have conversations and she's the one that actually invited me to that Bible study. And so we would go on walks and I felt, um, I would just share things that had happened in my life. Um, but from a way that I was looking at it different. Mm, mm-hmm. And I think in that way, I was able to start processing the forgiveness and, and retraining my brain because I had carried that pain in those stories for so long that you can't just stop those, right? It's become a habit. It was ingrained in me. And so I think the more I talked about it or thought about it or wrote about it, it was starting to become the new story and the new habit in my body. Yeah. Um, but I think there's so much power in words and in writing, um, and in that pen to paper. And when you set the intention of like, I'm writing this to let this go, to get this out of me, to put it on paper. So it's no longer Longer living inside because when you have so much living inside of you, it's really hard to to have the rational side of you kind of talk you through it because it just feels jumbled. And so I think right. when you can write it down and you can see it and you can just imagine that it's just coming out of you and on paper, um, it feels like it has less power over you. Yes. Yeah, it most certainly does. There was one practice that I had heard, this is a little different, but, it, but helpful nonetheless, was... Like when you really have issue with someone, this was, man, this was years ago. This was before I was married. I was a teen, I remember. Um, like sometimes right when you're frustrated with someone, write a, an email to them that you just never send and you delete or mm-hmm. write it down on, on a letter and then burn it or throw it away or something like that. And I did that a time or two over that over that time and it was helpful. Mm-hmm. The I'm trying to think if I have written, I don't think I've done what you have when it comes to forgiveness. Um, and you literally just took pen to paper and would write out, did you write out, here's how you hurt me, here's, you know, how I was wronged, um, this is how it kind of maybe even reinforced some negative s- storylines in my life, this was some of the long-term impacts, um, and even all that said, you know, I'm still hopeful for the future and I forgive you and I'm going to move on. Is that kind of the content of that letter or what did you have in there? Yeah. Uh, most of the letters I actually wrote to myself um, because I felt that I wanted uh, to to forgive myself for the way I dealt with things and to offer grace to myself for the things that I went through. Um, and so that kind of just looked like talking about what I was feeling and and writing and and revisiting those situations that had caused me so much pain. So like there are moments that I remember, like I remember the day that my dad told me that he was, you know, divorcing my mom. And then I remember the night that my friends told me they weren't going to be there and all these moments that I remember. And so I would take myself back to those moments and just kind of not relive them, but allow myself to almost talk to myself from an older state to my younger self. So writing sure. back. Um, and then I did do letters that were, you know, just totally probably not PC and just, you know, just talking it out and just writing what I felt and just the betrayal or any emotions, but it was really focused on emotions and what it caused me to feel and how it caused me to do things so that I could start to understand why I have all these things that I do. Like, why am I shut down? I want to know what shut me down because that's the only way we can move forward because that those events caused the story that was leading my life. And so I think it was honestly a little bit of both, but I did write a lot of letters to myself. Um, 
more so than I did to the people that hurt me because uh, I didn't really want to waste energy on that anymore, but I wanted to give myself space um, to kind of understand and to just um, just love on myself. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned for for well, writing letters to yourself and forgiving yourself is of all the people that you had to forgive was forgiving yourself the hardest one. Yeah, and I think uh, I think the anxiety that I went into a couple of years ago, I think that was partially that uh, from that uh, just. I think I had so much disappointment and anger in myself and, uh, in the way that I had treated my body and, uh, in, and before I understood like why, like looking back, it's always so easy, right? Like I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I went through all these things so I can serve other people and help other people. And it's made me really, really strong in who I am and who God created me to be. But when you're in those situations, even a year or two out of them, it's really hard. And so I think, I was just still feeling so much anger and I didn't understand like who I had become and, uh, and just how I had handled things and, you know, why I, why I dealt with things the way I did, which made me lose my friends. Like I, I just thought that I had pushed everybody away and that I had messed up all these things. And so forgiving myself for all of that was really, really difficult. And I think like loving other people can be easy. It can be hard, but I think loving ourselves is so hard because we, we judge ourselves and we look at ourselves at a much harder scale than we judge other people. And I was actually talking about this with a client the other day who really just is having a hard time loving herself. And I asked like, if your kids mess up, do you love them unconditionally or does it come with, you know, I'm only going to love them if they do X, Y, and Z. She's like unconditionally. And I asked her the same about her, you know, her parents, her siblings and her friends. And it was all unconditionally and, and same with, you know, with God, even though like God never lets us down, but sometimes we think he does, but he never does. Yeah. <laughs> and then I asked her about herself and she said, well, I can't love myself like that because I haven't done this or I don't do this. Right. You know, and, uh, loving ourselves is extremely hard. And that's why I'm such an advocate and so passionate about it because love Life changes when you love yourself and not when you get somewhere, not when you achieve all the things, but when you love yourself now and all your imperfections, because they're not imperfections at all. They're exactly who you're supposed to be, but it's so hard. It is so hard to love yourself. Well, it is hard. And have you found that it is harder for some personalities than others? Like I picture that loving yourself, forgiving yourself is harder for maybe more, I don't know how to exactly... Um, define this, but maybe for more driven or goal oriented personalities, and it might be a little easier for other personalities that you know might be less driven or goal oriented. Do you do you think it's just equally hard for everyone to love or forgive themselves, or do you think certain personalities deal with it even more? Yeah, so I think it's hard for everybody, but I think that people who are driven, type A perfectionists, uh, I think it it does it looks different um, because. Uh, that's a whole nother standard. So I think that everybody struggles with self-love, but I think the journey of what that looks like and then the journey to get there is totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, your people who are very goal-oriented, they want to love themselves once they've achieved all these things. And so they're very just like, go, 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 go. But then you have a lot of people who they're not like that. They're, you know, but they they can't get themselves out of the muck of the stories. So it's just very like, these people are go, go, go. These people are moving so slow because they're just buried underneath all the crap that's happened. And so I think it, I think it, it is for everybody. Yeah. I think the, the, um, I I would assume people that deal with depression also that fleshes out differently for different people, but but I deal with depression from have from time to time, and it is almost always like I think it's basically every time, but almost always it is a result of basically me spiraling into you know that you shouldn't have done that, you're an idiot, why do you always mess that up mm-hmm. can't why can't you do better? you know why can't you be you know all of this and it just spirals. so it's a very like it's a depression that comes from. Well, it's not loving yourself, mm-hmm. not forgiving yourself, not giving yourself the amount of grace that you give other people. Yes. Um, not giving yourself the benefit of the doubt because quite honestly, I don't really think I, I don't feel like I have much trouble giving other people the benefit of the doubt. Like that's always been a thing, but I don't give myself the benefit of the doubt very much at all. So mm-hmm. it, it tracks with exactly what you're saying. 100%. So this was, this was 
your senior year in college so when this you started was, this process of forgiveness? It was really like end of sophomore year, mostly junior year um, that I would say that I went through that. Um, okay. But, you know, I, I started to forgive other people, but I still was carrying, I still, I still hadn't processed through it all the crap that had happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was forgiveness was like the first door, but I had been, you know, in my junior year of college, I was what, how old are you then? Like 20, maybe 19. So, you know, a lot of stuff had happened and I hadn't, that was like the door. The forgiveness was just like cracking open to all the crap that I had stuffed down for so many years, Um, which is really interesting working with like younger clients who have not carried the stories as long as people in their fifties have. And so it's like twice as hard sometimes to go through all the stuff to get there. But so I think forgiveness kind of just like cracked open that door. But mm-hmm. yeah, so that was um, really mostly my junior year um, was when that was really kind of coming about. Okay. Um, and then um, if uh, let's pick up the story there again, if that's a, uh, if yeah. you kind of covered that, that part. Yeah. Um, so after that, um, they're really, I mean, my story after that for a little while, I met my husband my senior year. I had actually sworn off dating four months before I met him. I had read When God Writes Your Love Story and was like oh. <laughs> just done with dating. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this the right way. And so I was going to take a year off. And uh, my best friend was um, a debutante. She had grown up with my husband and she was a debutante. And I went to her debutante ball and he was her marshal. So it was her now husband husband and then my husband that walked her down the aisle and presented her okay. um, at this whole thing. And so I met him there. Um, you met your now husband there. Yes. Hadn't known him before that. No. And yeah. And what is a debutante? Uh, I think... Think it's like a coming out of a young woman to society. It's a southern okay. tradition. I don't really know that much about it, um, but you know they walk. They wear white dress and they walk down the aisle with. I think their dad walks them and then the marshals do, or no, it's opposite. The marshals walk them down, then she walks back by herself, I think. So I think it's all about just like a young woman being announced to society. I what think age a, is this normally? Um, hers was when she was 21. Um, so, but I'm not sure if, I think that there are people that do it younger. I don't, okay. I don't know much about it other yeah. than that. Hmm. I knew it was a big party <laughs> and, yep. uh, and that was going to be a good time. And so, and yeah. she was my best friend. So I was like, I'm there, I'll support you. Um, so I met him there and we really didn't talk like the whole time. I thought he, when I met him in her kitchen, I felt like everything stopped and and so did he, but then the rest of the weekend, we really didn't talk except for the last night we were there, my best friend's now husband told me that he was going to propose to her. And I was like, well, I have to tell someone. So I don't tell her. So I ended up telling my husband that night. And, uh, but then we went our separate ways and, uh, we ended up kind of talking back and forth and joking about him coming to visit me over the holidays. And he did come visit me. And, uh, and then we were together on and off for there. But, you know, my, my husband lost a sibling as well and comes from a divorced family. Um, and so I think, uh, my husband, he was the first person that I really ever showed up fully to love in a relationship. And I think I felt comfortable doing that because he had gone through similar pain. Um, but I think in that there was also a mess. It was a mess because we are depending on each other to fix what had been broken by other people, by events, by our past, instead of, um, coming healing ourselves and then coming together. And so our relationship was fierce and, and passionate and beautiful, but there's also a lot of pain. You know, we'd come together for these weekends that would be amazing. And then we'd leave and all he wanted to do since he was little was be in the military. Mm. So all he cared about, he was not all he cared about, but he was very focused. He's a very focused man. And, um, and I wanted our relationship to work. And so I was pouring into it and not receiving the same thing back. And, uh, and so there was a, a lot of heartache in this really beautiful relationship. And I really felt like we were supposed to be together, but I was constantly, we were just so much pain, so many fights and, um, and then a lot of beauty in it too. And so it was very confusing. Um, and so we, we actually broke up twice. I think. Yeah. And so, uh, we dated through senior year, broke up after we graduated, got back together, broke up again, we're broken up for a year and then we came back together. Um, 
And in that time, a lot changed. I started working for Lululemon out of college, which was really one of the most beautiful blessings for me. It's a, such an amazing company um, because it's what really opened me up to um, goals and self development and leadership and really like this idea that you can create who you want to be. Um, it takes work, but putting the pieces together and kind of training like you train at the gym, but you're training these different muscles inside of you. And um, I was exposed to um, the Landmark Forum and and um, just a bunch of different leadership courses through them and led vision and goals and just really fell in love with this idea of like, if we dream it, we can have it. And mm -hmm. just that manifestation and just the power that comes behind that. And uh, I remember it was one December and I was sitting um, just in a, in a wreck. Like after college, I was just kind of all over the place. I was kind of partying a lot and still numbing in a way. I had gone back to kind of binging and I was just drinking a lot with my friends and I've never really liked alcohol. So, and I just felt like I was living a life that wasn't me. And uh, I had al always in my life kind of lived my life to impress my dad. And I really just uh. wanted his approval. And uh, so I wanted a major that I felt like he would be proud of. And, and this is, of course, all me. He's always been proud of me. But I just wanted that approval. I wanted to just feel like I had earned that. And so... Um, and I really spent my life living for other people. You know, if other people wanted me to do something, I would do it so they would like me instead of speaking up for what felt true to me. And, uh, and so I, after college, I was just kind of a mess. Um, and I was working for Lululemon. I had gotten into personal training, really just wanted to use that aspect, right? I had thought about my sister and I was like, well, I have this physical body and I know how to train myself and other people. So, and I really fell in love with personal training, um, but as I started to get into it, I realized that it's so much more about up here than it is about the actual, yep. uh, training itself. So that is where my journey kind of switched. But, um, so I was sitting on the couch really just in a low, I think, uh, my husband and I had just broken up. It was December and I was watching, I'm not your guru by, uh, it's a Tony Robbins. Oh, that is a really great documentary. It's, it's amazing. And I remember sitting on my couch and just like bawling my eyes out. And I was like, I'm going to be at that event next year. At the time, I think I was making like $20,000 a year. So like nothing and living in Boca Raton, which is so expensive. And I was like, and I think the events, you know, five, $6,000 or something. And I was like, I'm going to be there. Don't know how but I'm going to be there. And I felt it like in me. Wow. And, 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 and I'm not your guru is about Tony Robbins or about unleashing the power within, or is it date about with destiny? Is it about date with destiny? Yeah. It's that event. Uh, it's his okay. event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yep. UPW is like the, the starting it's okay. a th four day I've been, event. I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Me too. So many times. And, uh, and then day with destiny, uh, is the longer, more intense. Uh, and he's, it's one that, uh, he talks about, he just has a lot of pride in cause he created it out of a moment where I think he was really in a dark time. So he created this event. So, but I saw it and I was like, I need all of that in my life. And so February rolls around and my mom calls me one day I'm at work and she's like, would you like to go to UPW? And I'm like, what? And she had met someone at, a, she is really into self-development. Both my parents are, which has also been really cool for me as I've gone on that journey because it opened up all these different ways to speak and to start understanding everything that had happened. And she had met someone who had an extra ticket and was willing to give it away. And she was like, my daughter would love to go. But it was in California. It was like a week and a half away from when she called me. And I was like, I had never flown that far by myself, stayed by myself in a hotel. But I was like, I have to go. Like, even if I lose my job, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to be at this event. And uh, and I went. And uh, the first day, I kind of didn't play full out. You know, I wasn't dancing. I was really focused on what other people were thinking. Were you by yourself? By myself. You went to UPW by yourself? In California. And yeah. what year, by the way? I was there. What year was that? I went to date with Destiny in 2018. So I think it was seven, 2017. 2017 in uh, LA? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think yeah. we went in 15 or so. Yeah, yeah it okay. was 17. It was 17. Uh, oh, wait. I went to date with Destiny in 17 and a 17 before 18. I think, I don't know, too many years, but yep. yeah. So I was there and I flew out by myself. I remember I got in really late and I was just like, what in the world did I just do? Like I'm in the middle of LA by myself. It's like midnight. I don't know anybody here. I'm at this event, but I also remember sitting there and being feeling for the first time in my life, so free and so empowered that I had done that, right? Like I had yes. gotten on that plane and I'm by myself 
across the country from everybody that I know. And I'm doing it for me. And that was the first time that I'd really done something for me and that I just felt so much, I just felt driven. Like I knew that's where I was supposed to be. And uh, it was one of the most eye-opening, just like, oh my gosh, I loved that experience. Um, And it was the first time that I had told myself that I love myself, you know, the last day where you do that final meditation. And I remember saying to myself, they tell you to say your name and then say, I love you. And I had never once used my name and then said that I love you Mm -hmm. after it and really had never just said to myself, you know, I tell people all the time, like if I love them, I'm going to tell them, but I never tell that to myself. And I just remember sitting there sobbing. And I remember, um, I had hooked up with, uh, a a couple people, you know, you meet people Mm -hmm. and then you just kind of stay with them for the rest of the event. And I just remember standing next to them and just bawling my eyes out, not because I was sad, but because for the first time I just felt like I had just given myself this gift that nothing else in life feels that way. Like it's just, there's no way to describe it. 